Hey everyone, it's Kelly. I am back today with a 12 by 12 scrapbook process video. I feel like it's been a little while since I've posted a 12 by 12 layout, but I went ahead and set up my camera and recorded this process. So I thought I'd just go ahead and post it out on YouTube. But before I start, I am going to do a pick monkey tutorial. I want to show you how I did this face swap. I had these two pictures, one of my husband, one of my son, and in each picture, one of them is looking at me. I did not have a picture where they both were looking at me. So I want to show you how I did that face swap really simply using PicMonkey. So you're just going to go to PicMonkey and click on edit image and then go onto your computer and find the photo that you are going to want to edit. I am going to start with the picture where my son is looking directly at me. I thought that it would be easier to edit the photo this way, doing the face swap with my husband versus my son because he is more of the focal image because he is closer to the camera. So my son's looking at me, my husband is not. So now I'm gonna go back up to add an image on the top of the screen and pick the photo where my husband is looking at me. And it's gonna go ahead and add that as an overlay on top of the original photo that I uploaded. I just want my husband's face in this photo. So in the photo panel on the right hand side, I'm going to click crop and I'm just going to crop that overlay image as close to my husband's head as possible because that is the only portion of the photo that I am wanting to use from the second photo that I uploaded. So hopefully that makes sense and you're still following me here. So once you're happy with the crop, you're just going to click apply crop and then you're going to go back to that same panel and you're going to click on erase. Now here you can change the hardness and the size of the eraser. I like to take the hardness down pretty far. The hardness is almost the feathering of what you're erasing. So it gives you a little bit more grace as you're erasing. Uh, you aren't going to have such a harsh line when you're erasing. So if you happen to get a little bit close to uh, his face or his ear or anything along those lines, it doesn't take away as much as quickly. So you can kind of play around with that and see what you like that hardness to be, how drastic you want the line to be where you're erasing. So for a minute here, it's going to look like I just have a floating head in the picture because again, all I really want is his face. So I'm just trying to erase everything but his face. So now I'm positioning it back on top of his head in the original photo. And you can also grab along the edges of that overlay image, the floating head image and make it larger, make it smaller. And I just wanna make it fit on top of that original image. So I'm just gonna play around with the angle of it, the size of it until I get it where I like it. I did find that there were a few spots that I missed when I went in with the eraser initially. So I'm just going back in with the eraser again and just kind of dragging it around his face a little bit more just to help make that image a little bit more crisp. So here in just a second, you're going to see that I get a little carried away with my eraser. I thought that I had clicked on the paint option, which is what I just clicked on now. The paint option will add in the overlay again, and I'm just going back through and just painting the portion of his face back in that I accidentally erased when I was trying to just make that image a little bit more crisp. So I'm going to speed up this next little part just to finish kind of getting around the detail edges of his face. Once I am happy with the, the cropping and just the editing there, I'm going to pull the face away. I just wanna to check to see if there's any little bits and pieces that I missed when I was going through and using that eraser tool. So now I'm gonna bring his face back over and lay it back on top of that original image. I do want to try to match the head position. So, you know, his head is turned a little bit in the original photo. I just want to lay this face on his face. This is such a weird way to describe this, but I just want to lay those images right on top of each other and try to match them. The whole point in editing it this way is to make it look like a natural photo. I want it to look like this is the photo that I took with my camera and not that I implanted his face on top of a photo that I was not happy with. So again, just going around those images, just trying to get it as crisp and clean as possible. And then I want to modify the his hairline a little bit. The photo that I used as the overlay, his head was actually at the top of the photo, so it was cut off. So there was a pretty harsh line there. So I just went back in with the eraser tool and just kind of erased around that. It's pretty dark in the background of the photo and my husband's hair is very dark. So that was a pretty easy fix for me. 
I'm also going to go over to the edit panel on the left hand side and that is where you can crop your photo. So I'm actually going to crop this photo quite a bit. It's going to be a square photo when I use it on my layout. So I just went ahead and set the proportions to square and I'm going to crop that image down and I do crop it pretty close to my husband's hairline again because the original photo or I'm sorry, the overlay photo was cropped really close to his hairline. So that is what the image is going to look like. Once I am happy with the image and happy, here's, I'm showing you a before and after so you can see the before and after and how that came together. And I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think that it is necessarily a professional job. I think a professional photographer would be able to do a much better job than I did. But for the most part, I'm happy with it. For it to be in my scrapbook layout, I don't think anybody going through will be able to tell that this was edited in this way. So once I'm happy with the photo, I go back into the layers panel and I click the flatten icon, which is that bottom icon in the layers panel. What that does is it flattens the image so it makes it one image. So once you flatten it, you're no longer able to move any portion of the photo. So I'm no longer able to move his face. Flattening the image allows you to edit the image as a whole now. So now I'm converting the photo to black and white. I'm gonna brighten it a little bit and that just allows me to do it all in one step if i did not flatten the image i would have to select multiple layers to make sure that i'm editing the layers all the same so that way they all convert to black and white that way they all brighten at the same time and it's just so much easier to flatten it once you know you're happy with it but you definitely want to wait to flatten it until you know that you like how the photo looks then all you have to do is download it to your computer and then send it to your printer. So it's just as simple and easy as that. And if you liked that tutorial and you're interested in seeing more tutorials where how I edit my photos, uh, please let me know in the comments below. And that is something that I would be happy to start including in my process videos. Okay, so now let's jump into the process. I went through my stash and I pulled out a couple very old collections from Crate Paper. I picked out the Cool Kid collection and I think it's the So Rad collection. I'm not sure. I looked at scrapbook.com and neither of these collections are still available. You may be able to find them online somewhere, but they are quite old. Uh, I just really felt like just going through my stash and using up some of my product. I am using a cut file from the cut shop for my title and I did cut it on craft cardstock. I will make sure to link to that cut file in the description box below. And I'm just using some of the six by six papers from both of those crate paper collections to back the cut file. I don't have a ton from these collections. I didn't purchase the entire collection. In fact, that so rad, which I am not 100% sure if that's the name of that collection, but I only have the six by six paper pad and then a couple loose eight and a half by 11 papers. So I'm just using with what I have here. I hoarded this collection because I really loved it. I loved that it was boy themed. Boy themed collections can be hard to come by. And I actually hoarded it a bit too long. My son is now 12 and a half and he's outgrown a lot of these icons and a lot of these images that are included in the these collections. So I'm definitely gonna to have to use it for older photos, which is what I'm scrapbooking here. My son was three in these pictures, so they were taken in 2011, and they were just perfect for what I was wanting to document, which is the first time that we took him to the movie theater, and we took him to see Cars 2. I went ahead and added my journaling to the 12 by 12 background. I do use a We Are Memory Keepers typecast typewriter. I know that that is either a love it or hate it tool. Some people really love it, including myself, and other people cannot stand that tool. They don't feel like a type straight, and I just love mine. I use it all the time, and I love how it looks on these 12 by 12 backgrounds especially. So I'm not going to do anything overly unique with the scrapbook layout. So I'll let you just watch this layout come together. And as it's coming together, I just want to give you a little bit of an update on what is going on with my scrapbooking and my YouTube channel and things like that. Last year, I started doing quite a bit of memory planning and a happy planner. And I posted a few videos of the processes of those coming together. And towards the beginning of the year, I was really trying to decide on whether or not I wanted to continue my channel. My views were really low and I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I did post a chit chat video if that's something that you're interested in watching. I will try to remember to post a link to that as well if you want to check it out. 
And at the beginning of the year, I was really starting to feel a little bit stifled with the memory planning. I liked the daily aspect, the weekly aspect of the memory planner, but I was really missing scrapbooking products. Happy Planner has a lot of great products, but I was miss missing the dimension and the texture and just overall feeling of scrapbooking. Uh, the memory planner felt really flat to me because you're kind of limited to how thick you can make it because you are on a disc system. And I started watching Heba from My Little Journal and she does a lot of Project Life. And I thought that was something that maybe I could give a go. I had always found Project Life very intimidating with the keeping track of the photos and keeping up with it since it's a weekly type of documenting, but I was already doing that in my memory planning. So I thought that it was something that I could at least give a try. So I actually ended up subscribing to a couple kit clubs. I subscribed to Studio Calico and Citrus Twist. I thought that the, both of those would work well with Project Life. And I don't have a lot of Project Life products because it's not something that I've ever really done before. I've never really committed to doing. And I started out, I was really enjoying it, and I actually ended up adding LA Studio to my subscription. So I subscribe to three different kit clubs right now, and I love the fresh new product coming in. I love that it has a pocket page style memory keeping aspect to it, and I am just really enjoying it. I am actually up to date on my project life. That is something else if you're interested in seeing processes, I would be happy to record those if that's something that you think that you would like to watch. I don't know a whole lot about the Project Life community. I'm not sure how big that community is, if that's something that people still actively do. I don't, like I said, it's something that's fairly new to me. I have a few YouTubers that I watch that create Project Life, but I don't really follow a lot of people that do that. So if you have someone that you watch that does Project Life and you really enjoy them, please let me know. I'm always up for more inspiration and I love connecting with people that like similar scrapbooking and documenting as I do. I'm also still trying to figure out how 12 by 12 layouts are going to fit into my scrapbooking and my documenting. I tend to have a one size fits all attitude when it comes to scrapbooking. And I'm not really sure why that is. It's just something that I impose on myself. I feel like I want all of my memories to kind of be kept in the same format. So I know a lot of people will do Project Life and then they'll also do Traveler's Notebooks or 12 by 12 layouts and kind of mix everything together and put their memories kind of here and there. But I like kind of a start and finish. I like to have all of my memory keeping kept in one format. So I don't have to remember, oh, did I document that in a traveler's notebook? Or, oh, did I document that in a 12 by 12 layout? I like a start and finish almost when it comes to my documenting. So I think for right now, because I am greatly enjoying Project Life, especially with everything that is happening with the pandemic and just everything that is really unprecedented right now, I like that I'm able to be up to date on that and documenting that and just able to get those memories and those feelings and those emotions documented in the moment. And that's something that 12 by 12 scrapbooking didn't really allow me to do because I can fit right now I'm doing double page spreads per week. And typically I have between 14 to 16 photos on a double page spread along with quite a bit of journaling. So I'm able to really get in depth on the memory keeping part, which for a long time was not important to me, but lately it feels important. It feels like something that I really want to have written down and that I think that will be worthwhile going back through year after year to kind of read what was happening in our lives at that moment. So I think, like I said, said, I kind of went on a tangent there. I think my 12 by 12 scrapbooking is going to have to be kept for older memories. I do not plan on going back and documenting previous years in project lifestyle. So I think that for my older photos, like these photos that I'm documenting here, I will continue to do 12 by 12 layouts because I do have a ton of 12 by 12 product and I am using some of it in my project life. I try to incorporate at least one spread a month using scrapbooking supplies because I don't want to feel like I wasted money on all of these supplies that I have purchased because they do still bring me quite a bit of joy. So I definitely want to make sure that I am getting the most use out of them as possible.
So I think that pretty much brings everything up to date as far as what's going on with my memory keeping. I would like to continue making videos. I really do enjoy making them. I enjoy sharing them. I especially enjoy the interaction. There are a few of you that always comment and always tell me what's going on with you and just, you know, where you're at with your memory keeping. And I just really, really, really enjoy that aspect of the process videos. I think that that's something that is unique when you share a process video. I feel like it's a different connection with the people who watch your videos versus someone who comments on a photo, which I do appreciate everyone that comments on my photos on Instagram, but I just feel like there's more of a conversation aspect to process videos versus posting on Instagram and those kind of things. The only other thing that I can think of is design team stuff. I am currently not a part of any design teams. The cut shop closed their design team, I think at the end of March. So that was the last design team that I was a part of. I did end up leaving Shimmers at the beginning of the year with the new style of scrapbooking I was doing with the memory planning and then switching to Project Life. I just really wasn't using a lot of mixed media and it just didn't really feel like a good fit at the time. And I didn't want to force it because I really do love Shimmers products and I wanted to make sure that my whole heart was in it if I was going to be creating for them. And at that time, it just really was not. And they were very gracious and very generous and very understanding of that, which I truly appreciate. So I still love Shimmers products and the company is amazing. So if you're a mixed media fan, I highly, highly recommend them. So that wraps it up for this layout. I do want to mention that I know that I included the number three and a few different spots on the layout. That was just a reference my son's age. He was three years old at the time in case you were curious as to why I added all those threes onto the layout. But here are the still shots. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that the chit chat portion wasn't too long or too boring. And I feel like you could really tell what I was doing on the layout as I was putting it together. Like I said, it wasn't anything that was unique or different. It was just a scrapbook layout coming together. So thank you all so much for watching and I hope to be back again soon.